this is the first in a series of training bites covering the control and the customization of UVM reports. We recommend you take this training bite first because we're going to cover the basics, we're going to talk about the macros and their arguments and the terminology, but we'll also give you some useful tips on using message defines and also basic guidelines on using reports. So you know how it is, you get your simulation running, you look at your log file and you're faced with a, a sea of reports and uh, as you wade through the reports trying to understand what's going on, your common questions and common issues tend to crop up. So for example you may have one UVC that's generating hundreds of reports, is it possible to reduce the reports just coming from that UVC? Maybe you have a third party UVC IP block where the reports are, are wrong or inconsistent and you want to fix those reports without changing the code of the blocks. Is this, is this possible? Maybe you're getting some reports coming from inside the UVM library that you want to change their characteristics. Maybe make them errors rather than warnings perhaps. Uh, maybe you want to run all the UVCs inside of your simulation with different verbosities. Hide the messages from one, but make all the messages from another visible to help us debug what's going on. And it may be that you have a UVC that has a problem, and you want to dump all of the reports just from that UVC into a separate file, so you can send the file to the developer and he can help you debug what's going on. Maybe you have some fatals that you want to downgrade to errors so you can get further through the simulation without coming across problems, or maybe you just don't like the appearance of any of the reports inside of UVM and you want to have your own custom output, or maybe output in a certain format such as XML or HTML, something like that. So, during the course of these training bytes in the series, we're going to try and answer all of these issues and all of these problems. So first of all, let's start with the basic UVM report. So uh, the basic UVM info has three arguments, a string ID, a string message, and a verbosity. And remember we have other macros for fatal error and warning reports. So if we execute this tick UVM info, we get the following output. So we have the severity reported, we then get a path name down to the file that contains the report declaration. We also have the line number inside that file where the executed line for the report was. We also get the time when the report was executed. And we also get a scope, which is a hierarchical path name down through your UVM environment to the component that generated the report. And then finally, at the end of the line, we get the payload of the report, which is the ID string and also the message string itself. Now, first thing to look at this report, you can see that the, the file path name can take up quite a lot of space inside of that line, and it kind of pushes the payload of the report, the ID and the message string, all the way to the right-hand side where it may break into the next line. So, first quick tip here, what we can do is we can suppress the printing of the file path name. UVM has a built-in define to remove the file and all the line information automatically from all of the report outputs. And it's really simple to add this. You add this to the command line and the define to remove both file and line information is UVM report disable file line. If you add that to your command line, now when you run a simulation and execute this tick UVM info, we get the following output. As you can see, there's, there's no file information here, there's no line number, and it's much more concise. Now these defines are not documented in the online UVM HTML help, but if you look in the uh, file UVM message defines.svh under the source macros directory, there's much more information about all the define options, but hey, the basic one is report disable file line, which will remove both file and line. So yeah, first good tip here. Okay. Use these defines to make your output more concise. So let's have a quick look at all of the arguments of the reports, starting first with verbosity. So remember, only info macros can have a verbosity argument, and there are six predefined verbosities inside the UVM language, from UVM none to UVM debug. Uh, the default is UVM underscore medium. These are just defined as a, an enumerate type, but they have a predefined integer value also. And the idea of this is to allow the user to define intermediate verbosities in between the predefined values, although this is rarely done. Now the idea of verbosity is for a simulation run, you can specify a verbosity maximum. And what this means is that any report which was declared with verbosity greater than the maximum is not processed. 
It's not just it's not printed, it's not even processed. And certainly if your message argument contains a lot of string processing, not processing the message can save simulation time. So it's more efficient to run with a lower verbosity. For every simulation run, you can change that verbosity setting. So the idea here is we can run with a low verbosity setting to start off with, and if things go wrong, we can raise our verbosity, perhaps to UBM full, see more messages coming out, and therefore have a, a greater idea about what's going on inside of our design. So you need to use verbosities carefully. Make sure your important messages have UBM underscore none verbosities, and other messages of less importance have increasing verbosities. Now we normally set the verbosity maximum using a command line option, a simulator argument, plus UVM underscore verbosity, but we'll show you later, ways later on in this series of training bytes to have individual control of verbosities on individual components and UVCs inside of your environment. If we move on to severity next, now remember there's four severities, info, warning, error and fatal. Okay, the macros uh, do not allow you to specify a verbosity for warning errors and fatals. These are automatically set to UVM none, which is which is good. Okay, because a, a fatal will automatically end the simulation, and you don't want that having a high verbosity, which is hidden from your verbosity setting, so your simulation ends and you don't know why. So the verbosities for these are automatically set to UVM none, so they're always printed. Now, a quick tip here. If you get any error messages reported before the start of your run phase, then a UVM simulation will automatically stop at the start of the run phase. So this is a good tip. Don't use fatals in any of your phases before the run phase. Use errors instead. And the idea here now is that instead of running a simulation, hitting a fatal, fixing that fatal, and then rerunning the simulation and hitting another fatal, if you express the problems and the issues using errors instead, you can run all the way up to the start of the run phase. If you've had any errors in any previous phases, the simulation will automatically stop and you can see all of your problems in one go, rather than fixing them individually with separate simulation runs. Now you also get a summary printed at the end of the simulation of all of your reports with a count by severity and also a count by ID. So let's have a quick look at ID now. Now it's common to use get type name or get full name method calls as the identifier. And what this does is it sets the ID of the report to the type name or the hierarchical path name of the component. So when we execute this tick UVM info, we get the following output. So the ID is set to the class type of the file that generated the message. Now the problem with this is you're, you're duplicating the file information. If you're not using one of the file or line message define suppressors, then you've got a duplication. The ID is the same as the file name. And you're missing a trick here, because one way of uh, controlling your reports is via their ID. Probably the, the best practice is to come up with a predefined list of IDs for particular report uses. So for example, all of your reports relating to interface connection can have the ID VIF, all of your configuration reports can use CFG, and then likewise for packet transmission and coverage. And first of all, this allows you to group related reports through oh, across many UVCs in your design, and secondly, it gives you much better control, because we can control reports via that ID. However, you know, if you're dealing with third-party uh, UVC blocks, this is no, not always possible to do this, but certainly for the UVCs you generate yourself, you should try where possible to come up with this predefined ID list. So if we have a look at the, uh, the message string argument of the report, now if you want to print out, for example, the, the packet details or data items, then we can use a $S format F which allows us to create a string using normal dollar display syntax, which allows us to use format specifiers and special characters such as the slash n new line. Now we see a lot of code using dollar ps printf, which is widely used and widely supported. Strictly speaking, that's not an IEEE standard. You should probably be using dollar s format f instead. But hey, they both work. Now the options for actually printing out the data items, you've got two options here. The first one is to use sprint, so sprint is, is like the print method, but it only creates a string, it converts the 
packet data item here, for example, into a string, and then we feed that into the info report so we can have control over its visibility using verbosity settings. Now, the good thing advantage about sprint is it's automatically defined if you're using field automation macros in your data item on your data properties or if you have an explicit do print declaration. And you even have a little bit of control over how the output of that sprint looks like. There's a, a UVM class called UVM Printer Knobs. It's a series of switches which allows you to customize the appearance and behavior of an sprint call. The alternative to sprint is to use convert to string. Now, convert to string is actually defined in the UVM object class as a placeholder, and it's explicitly intended to allow the user to define their own customized output of a, of a data item. And uh, convert to string is generally a good idea to use if you want a more concise output than the uh, default sprint offering. Let's have a look at an example of both here. So this is my uh, YAP packet data item here. It has length and address properties, and I have field automation macros declared on both those properties, and these give me the declaration of the sprint call. But I also have an explicit convert to string method declared in here. Uh, all this has to do is return a string. So here I'm using again a $s format uh, $s format f call here, just to return the address of the packet in convert to string. Now here's an example using both. Uh, for the first one, for sprint, what I'm going to do is slightly change the appearance of the sprint call. Normally by default you get a, a table printer view when you call sprint. What I've done here is I've created my own instance named custom of the default table printer. I've used the uh, knobs uh, collection of switches, that's that UVM printer knobs class I mentioned on the previous slide. I've pushed down to that hierarchy, I've picked up the size property, and I've set that to zero. And what this does is it prints a table printer, but with the size column disabled. So um, I'm using this then passed into my sprint call, so I'll use my custom printer. So the output looks something like this. So again, it's a standard uh, tabular print, but with the size column disabled. The second UVM info down here is using the convert to string call. And as you can see, that's much more compact here. I'm controlling just the properties I want to see. I'm only printing out the address. So in actual fact, it's quite a good tip to use both of these. What we can do is we can use a, a high verbosity UVM info with a sprint call if you want to copy out, for example, all the properties inside of a class, and then we can use a, a low verbosity convert to string to QVM info just to give you a summary of what's going on. So now I can print out that I sent a packet to address zero with low verbosity, but if I want to see the packet contents, the length, and perhaps the payload, I can simply raise the verbosity to see the output of the sprint call. So those are the arguments. Now, when you execute a report, there's a, a certain series of default actions built into UVM, and these are based on the severity of the report. So all of your reports of all severity, these are displayed, which means that the output is sent to the, the printer, the standard output. Fatal severity messages execute a UVM exit action, which terminates the simulation by default, and an error severity executes a UVM count action. And what this does is it increments what we call a quit counter. And what you can do is you can set a maximum number of count actions. And when the simulation reaches that maximum number, when it's executed, that number of reports with the count action attached to them, then the simulation will automatically finish. Now, by default, the max quit count is set to zero, indicating there's no maximum, so we won't stop the simulation when we get accounts. But you can set this count yourself. Uh, the problem is, it depends which version of UVM you're using as how to set this count. So, if you're using UVM 1.1D, we can simply call a method set report max quit count and put a value into that. But if you're using UVM 1.2, then we have the, the ability to have customized report servers in UVM 1.2. So what you need to do is you need to get a handle on the current server which is being used with a static call get server. You need to pass that into a, uh, a handle on the UVM report server, in this case here, SRV, and you need to call set max quit count as an argument of that uh, handle. <laughs> the better approach, perhaps, is just to use the command line. 
so you can pass in an option on the command line to the simulator plus UVM max quit count and this allows you to set the maximum quit count for that simulation command line options always give you the maximum flexibility you can change the value for each simulation run you can swap it in and out as you want for each simulation run and you don't have to recompile a simulator when you change the value now finally um, let's talk about uh, when you don't want to create reports so UVM gives you a certain amount of built-in tracing and you know it's better to use the built-in tracing than it is to create reports to give you the same information so there's, there's four built-in traces here. There's the phase trace. This uh, gives you a message automatically if you enable it when we switch from one phase to another. That's particularly useful if you're using the runtime subphases. We have the objection trace, which tracks when you raise and drop objections. We also have configuration database access tracing, and also the resource database, which is the underlying mechanism of the configuration database. Let's have a look at the objection tracing. So if you add this to the command line, then every time you raise or drop the objection, remember these method calls have two arguments. The second argument, the description argument, is a string, which should use a, a meaningful string for this. When you enable objection tracing, every time you raise or drop an objection, you're going to print a message out. Now these are UVM infos with an automatic verbosity of UVM underscore none, so they'll be always be output, and they include that second argument here, API test, the description argument of the raise or drop objection as part of the message. Hey, so if your simulation doesn't start or doesn't finish, you can simply ena enable objection tracing and see your objections being raised and dropped. So again, yeah, we shouldn't be using reports for anything which we have built in uh, tracing enabled in UVM. So this is the end of the first training byte covering the report basics. In the other bytes in this series, we're going to have a look at each of the individual arguments to the reporting mechanism and see how we can control and customize them. So the next one, we'll have a look at verbosity control. Later training bytes in the same series, we'll have a look at severity, action control, and also the customization of your reports using catchers and the report server.